that, their prayer meeting probably would have stopped a little short. They probably would have said, that's how are we going to get those chains off? How, how are we going to do this miracle? How, how's God going to come through? See, sometimes God doesn't let you know the details of the other side. Because if you knew all the details, it would lower your faith. You, oh, I can't. That's why I rarely ask for details when I pray for sick people. Because the more details I get, the lower faith I have. But I don't have to know what it is. But if I can say be healed, I have complete confidence that no matter what's going on in your body, God can heal it. Because faith doesn't need details. So they're praying about an answer that's chained up on the left and chained up on the right. Night before it's supposed to be executed. Peter's supposed to die the next morning. He's locked up between two soldiers, and prayer is warring for him to be free. And you don't know what to pray sometimes. And you don't know what's going on behind the scenes sometimes. You don't know what to say. But that's why you pray in the spirit. And you pray and you let God take over your words. Because God knows that chains need to come off your answer. Even if you don't think there are chains involved in the story. And he was in a cell. He wasn't just behind a door that was a closed door. It was not just a closed door. It was a locked door. It wasn't just a locked door. It was a guarded locked door. Had they known that, Lord, you know you can do it. And the prayer meeting ends in three minutes. They would have stopped praying for sure if they knew all it would take for this miracle to happen, they would have given up. But because they didn't know all the details, they just kept praying. <laughs> Thank God I don't know all that needs to happen for my miracle. All my job is is just to keep praying. I've just got to keep praying. I've just got to keep warring. I've got to keep believing God. I've keep trusting him and And as they were praying, an angel came into the prison. Sometimes God has to break in before your answer can break out. You got to get this. They didn't see the angel. They're over in the church praying. Just because you don't think anything is happening doesn't mean God has not sent angels into the situation you don't see the change, but you're not in the prison either. You're just waiting on God to do it. And an angel is already loose. Angel breaks in to get Peter to break out. Oh, and you think God's not hearing you. He's not doing nothing's changed. Nothing's changed on your end. Nothing's changed that you can see. That's why we're weak praisers, because we're waiting for the evidence in the church when the angel's moving in the prison. And you've got to let Kasha, you've got to let God move where he wants to move and praise him till you see the proof of it. Now, I was studying this last night, and I, when, I, when I saw what the angel did, I, I have to admit, Brother Spikes, the angel was not in stealth mode. First of all, he shined a light. Then he smote Peter, which means he struck him or he punched him. Then he yelled at him. Then he knocked his chains off. I'm not sure the angel wants Peter to even get free. Because if you're trying to sneak a guy out between two sleeping soldiers, why would you shine a light, punch the guy, 
yell at the guy, make the chains rattle. I'm like, does, does, he, does he want him to get caught? And then it hit me no, that the prayer at the church was so strong that the angel wasn't worried about who he would wake up to get him out. Wait, let me go. Oh, wait, wait. You have no idea how confident heaven is in your prayers. The angel's literally stomping around the prison because he knows God said get him out because the church is praying and it doesn't matter what's in the way. I said, your answer's coming out, and it's not even trying to be quiet about it. Your miracle's not sneaking out. Your miracle is marching out. Your miracle is not sneaking out. Your answer is marching out. God's going to set it free. The angel knew if they all wake up, we're still getting out of here. There's four quaternions of soldiers. There's 16 soldiers guarding one man. But the angel said if they all wake up, they're going to regret it because the prayer at that church building has released me to get no matter who and what is in the way out of the way so it can come to pass. The answer is not sneaking out. It's marching out. I don't feel anything. No, just keep praying. And the angel looks at Pete and says, put your clothes on. I mean, Peter's quite comfortable for, you know, the night before the execution. He's sleeping. If I'm getting executed tomorrow morning, I'm not sleeping tonight. Maybe you would just doze off, you know, in your sweet little walk with God. Me? No. Peter is sleeping. He's not even dressed. He's got his shoes off. If he had pajamas, he would have worn them. The answer, ready, was not prepared for the prayer. Sometimes your prayer is ahead of your answer. Sometimes your dream, Joseph, is ahead of the famine. Sometimes your timing is ahead of God's timing. But if you keep praying, God will get the answer ready because he said, get dressed. The prayer is demanding the answer to be released. Prayer was warring, but an unprepared answer had to start getting ready. I'm preaching this. If, if y'all don't want this, I will take this message and preach it all over America. Because I promise you, people want to know where their answer is at, and they're going to get the answer. I promise you in the Holy Ghost that there are people in this room that are praying, and they feel like their prayers are hitting the ceiling and coming back down because they're, what they're praying for is not happening in the room they are in. But you cannot stop praying. You cannot stop warring because there's a battle at the doorway of your destiny, and prayer is the only thing that will open the door. And here comes the angel, and here comes the answer following. The answer is following the angel. The angel is following the command of God. God is responding to prayer. There's a process to your miracle that you haven't even thought about, and God is ordering the steps of the answer. The answer is just numb. He's just following heavenly orders. Now go here. Now turn right. Now turn left. Now get to this door. And the angel would go through the first door, and Peter followed. And the angel went to the second door, and Peter followed until they came to the iron gate. In other words, all the doors in the prison led up to one big door. And 
you got out the prison cell, you had to go down the hall to the first door and get through that locked door. If you got out that locked door, you had to go down to the next locked door and get out with all the soldiers in the way. And if you got out that door, you had to get to the iron gate. Had the church known all that, But my Bible says with God, nothing shall be impossible. And so here's Peter. He's just following the angel. Prison door, open. First door down the hall, Brother Roland, open. Second door, open. And they come to the iron gate. Oh, this, was, this hit me so hard last night. I literally have to, I'm probably not going to preach it good, but it, it's good. That the iron gate was opened by Peter. I, I've heard this preached my whole life. Not by the angel. I know that. But this is what the Lord said to me. There comes a point if you keep praying where your answer gets desperate to get out. You didn't get it. Up until now, the answer is letting the angel open the door. But there comes a point when prayer gets so strong that the answer says, let me out. I've got to, I am being like a magnet. I am being pulled. I am being drawn. I am being moved to where God is calling me to. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but somebody's answer is about to knock a door open because it's being drawn by your prayers. Somebody praising for 10 seconds right now. Somebody, somebody worshiping. My answer is knocking the door out of the way. My answer is coming out. My answer is coming out. And they get out the iron door because the answer pushed it open. There comes a tipping point in the war for your answer that you don't have to do all the pushing. The answer starts pushing its way toward you because it knows you have prayed enough. You have warned enough, and the answer's on its way. (laughs) So across the street, they're in the city. And the answer is now loosed in the city. And the angel departs. And the answer goes searching for the people praying. The answer is searching for the person warring for it. The answer is saying, I hear somebody saying, God, pull that. Somebody's calling my name. Someone's praying for me. And while you're over there having a pity party of why God hasn't done it yet, you've got to shut that demon up and say, no, I'm going to keep praying because every time I pray, my answer takes another step. Every time I say, God, you can do it, my answer takes another step. And Peter finds the prayer meeting. And they're praying for what's knocking at the door. They're over here, God, deliver him. God, make a way. God, you're our only hope. And here's the answer going, I'm here. Someone needs to get off their knees and go check the door. There comes a time when you've prayed so many prayers that you've got to get up from praying and start walking by faith and start checking the door. I've made up my mind. I'm going to keep checking the door on this building. I'm going to keep knocking on the door because I've known God's pull. And there's a girl in the room named Rhoda, which means the rose. And the rose hears the answer. (laughs) 
And so she gets excited, and she's listening, and she's, that sounds like Peter. And the Bible said she recognized his voice. And so she got so excited about the answer being at the door that she forgot to open the door because she wanted to tell the church the answer's here. But church people are so carnal. I didn't say visitors. I was clear. Church people are so carnal that unless I see the answer, Thomas, unless I see the hands, unless I see proof, I'm going to keep begging. I'm going to keep whining. I'm going to keep complaining. I'm going to keep asking. I'm going to keep saying, well, woe is me. Do you care? But somebody in church said, I'm going to get up and check the door because I think if we pray hard enough, the answer's going to come to the door. She said, and so she said, I'm a, she forgets to open the door. <laughs> Pastor Andrew, she's like so pumped up that she goes and tells all the church people, Peter's at the door. And they said, thou art mad, or in, in translated, you have lost your mind. You have lost your mind. Now, this, is bo- this bothers me. Because they're praying for something they don't actually think is going to happen. Be careful. When you enter the prayer room with a doubting spirit. Because nothing turns God off more than praying in doubt. Well, you probably aren't going to answer this, but you're probably not going to come through. You're, you're probably going to say no. You're probably not going to hear me today. You're probably, up. you're probably mad at me, but careful, Thomas. And they're saying... God deliver him, and then someone said, God delivered him, and they said, impossible. Because we have it all figured out how God's supposed to do it. See, maybe they were saying, maybe Herod's going to cancel the execution tomorrow and postpone it, and then, and then someone's going to be able to pray more, and, and maybe he'll change his mind, and he'll make a declaration that Peter gets to go free. And then we'll all know that the answer's here, but it couldn't have happened this way. Anytime you think you have to figure it out on your own, and then you start to believe what you're figuring out, you have put God in a box of the pathway to your miracle. You will be frustrated quickly. He does not fit in your box, and he will not do it the way you want him to do it. So therefore, you have to understand that you're going to be upset because he's not doing it the way you thought he would. Peter can't be at the door We're praying, and now the prayer meeting becomes an argument. The prayer room now becomes contention center, and everybody is now talking against Rhoda. And they they were one minute ago saying, God, deliver him. And now they're saying, you're wrong. You're crazy. People saying it can't happen. Somebody saying it's there. They're arguing back and forth. And the Bible said, Peter kept knocking. I said all that to preach this to you right now. You ready? You're not going to shout, but I want you to get this and take this home with you. The answer is more desperate to get to you than you are to see the answer. Why? Because when I get disappointed, I stop praying. I pout. I recover. Then I pray again. But the answer never stopped knocking because the answer is so hungry to see you that when you're arguing, when you're complaining, when you're throwing a fit, when you're whining, the answer is saying, no, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. 
If some of you knew how big that was in your personal life right now, you would shout me down. You would take over the atmosphere. Because if you knew what was knocking at the doorway of your future, that you're distracted and you can't even see it, if you knew how hungry the answer is to meet you, The answer needs somewhere to land. The answer needs someone to open the door. The answer needs someone to say, not my will, but thine be done. What is it, God? The answer needs somebody to get off the floor and say, today's the day. God, open the door. What's going to happen? Hell's fighting us like crazy. Hell's warring against our church. But the reason they are warring is because we're at the door of a destiny. And you've got to make up your mind. I'm not going to stop warring until the answer walks through the door. Stand to your feet. I'm just about done. And the Bible said that when they saw Peter, they were astonished, which in the Greek says they lost their minds. They said to her, you've lost your mind. But when they saw the answer, they lost their mind. In other words, the answer's not going to even make sense. It's going to be that good. You can't contemplate it. You can't figure it out. You can't understand it because his peace surpasses all understanding. But when he gives it to you, it'll be mind-blowing. Some of you, most of you, I dare say almost all of us have been warring and praying and warring and praying and warring and praying. And when we were praying for this building, I was... It wasn't like some, well, let's, we get to have a quick minute meeting. Let's see what happens. There was 50 days of 5 a.m. prayer. Then there was a six-day water fast. Then there was an all-night prayer. Then there was anointing that lamb with oil. Then several of you went on chain fast. Then several of you went on long fast. And then we prayed. We met them before, and then we met them again. And, and then when we met them this third time, there were so many weeks in, of war and days of praying and fasting. And when they said, here's our price. a needle to a balloon. And I was starting to have a pity party. And my pastor said, get up. And my board said, get up. This is not over. You're at the door. Bishop said, get up. And I'm telling you, get up. Because we're not about to sit here and stay here six more months. There's no way. We can't even fit in this room right now. God said the answer is at the door. You can take hell's answer or you can trust heaven that something is happening behind the scenes. One of their, one of their leaders told us three. So one of the, the three leaders told us at least six times in that meeting, "You better jump on this. Come on, you need to get in here and jump on this." And I was like, "God, this can't be you, because you're not taking everything away from us." to pay somebody's bills. So I left there and I sent them a response that I'll pay that if I get the lease to own that. I'm not paying your bills. Because I'm not here for a temporary revival that lasts three minutes. I'm here for something that goes beyond tomorrow and beyond next week and beyond next month. And we've got to break into that dimension of faith and see, and then all of a sudden last night, God starts talking to me. 
And I'm reading that story like I've read a thousand times. And he said to me, every time you see the word Peter, put the answer instead. And I said, oh. And he said, tell the people that what they cannot see, they have actually prayed into existence. The miracle is moving closer and closer to them. All they have to do is keep praying and check the door. Check the door because it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Who am I preaching to right now? Who needs an answer in your house? Who needs a miracle in your, in your job? Who, who needs a miracle in your body? Who needs an answer in your marriage? Who needs a miracle in your baby? Who needs shut up? Who needs God to send an answer to the door? I don't know what else to pray. I don't know what else to ask. I don't know what else to say. But I'm going to check the door because my answer has been activated. And I've got to pray until it manifests. I want everyone to come up to the front if you're able. I know it's going to be quite close, but come into the aisle at least. Show me one thing he can't do. Show me a mountain he can't move. Make plenty of room. Everyone's afraid of the front. This is where the fire is. Come on, come up here. Here we go. Y'all afraid? Get up in the fire. Don't worry, I'm not going to spit on you. I'll back up. Show me a mountain he can't move. He's the God of the breakthrough. Anything is possible. Break every chain. Break every chain. Some of you need to make hell so mad because while you have no evidence in your house, the angels moving at the other house, the angels moving at the other location, and stirring Peter up, saying, you don't belong in here. You don't belong in this atmosphere. You don't belong in this. Get up. Get dressed. Answer doesn't even feel anything yet. But the answer's being drawn by somebody saying, God, you're going to do it. God, you're going to make a way. You're going to give us a building. We're going to see it happen. We're going beyond this. Show me one thing he can't do. He can't. I've seen him raise the dead. I've seen him bring people out of wheelchairs more times than I can count. I've seen blind eyes open more times than I can count. I've seen deaf ears open more times than I can count. I've seen cancer disappear more times than I can count. I've seen jobs up here more times than I can count. I've seen marriages restored more times than I can You cannot convince me that he cannot come through. He's too, he's too big. He's too amazing. He's too wonderful. I wonder, they're going to sing this song. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. If everything is perfect in your little world, then you give God that chill praise, okay? I'll understand. I won't even, I won't even joke with you. All I'm asking you to do is worship at the desperation of the attack. Praise God at the desperation of the, of the struggle. In other words, as bad as it's been, that's what you need to do to worship God. Because the answer is running to you. I said the answer is running to you. The answer is looking for you. The answer's breaking through barriers trying to get to you. The answers say, come on, keep calling my name. Keep calling my name. Keep saying my name. Keep calling my name. I'm being drawn. I'm being drawn. Show me 
they're going to sing. Would you raise your hands by the authority of the word of God and the power of the name of Jesus. I release the working of miracles in our houses, in our jobs, in our finances, in our marriages. I release answers from Oshatalahaya. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, somebody praise him. There's nothing.